Hey everybody, Angie here with a special treat today. Um, I'll be playing that, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Um, so I've owned the, I own the original Gloomhaven. I've only played one scenario on it, but this seemed like a good idea because it could get me back into playing the rest of the scenarios and especially since things are solo, um, I can go ahead and do that. So I'm really looking forward to that. This is gonna be great. We're gonna have a fun time. It's gonna be stupendous. I'm super excited about it because there was a lot. Um, I did an unboxing for it a couple of weeks ago, which you can see in another video in the, um, on the channel. But I just kind of breezed through things, then look at everything. And then last night I did some pre-reading so that I can be able to hop in. We can do a playthrough without me being like, oh, did I mess that up? Oh, did I mess that up? To try to get things going. Hey, Lakuna, how's it going? <laughs> so, um, I, re I read through, I, I didn't read the first scenario. I read through the, so it comes with this really cool thing. And let me hold this up. Where is it? Yeah, it's this guy. So when you open the box, you run into this beautiful thing that just says, hold up. Read this before you even go to anything else. And what it actually does is it tells you how to separate the game out into different bags and where to put things in trays. So Jaws of the Lion was created, and I'm sure you've read 10 billion times, it was created for to be a, um, to break that barrier between if I bring out Gloomhaven and put this ridiculously heavy box on your table, you'll be like, okay, I don't want to play that, that's too much. And Jaws of the Lion was created for a family setting and to get people into the game. And then they'll be like, oh, that's not bad. And what they do is they introduce you to the things that your character can do in Gloomhaven scenario by scenario in a five scenario setup. And I said scenario a lot of times, I know. But this was cool. And then I went to the learn to play guide that they gave and um, just kind of read through how they're stepping you through the scenarios. And you know what? They did a really good job at this. I really liked how they did it. So let's get the info over the uh, through that we, usually do and then we'll get down to the table play this game and have a really great time so uh let's go to bgg bgg has this game rated as a 9.2 it's only been out a week yeah it's a week because i got it last sunday and um i'm pl i'm finally getting to it because we went through some other playthroughs but it, it's only been out a week and it's already generated such a buzz um it was a target exclusive and if you go to Target now, you're probably not going to find it until they restock, but good luck. <laughs> so um, 9.2, best played, um, I believe the book has it best played two to four players, and that also increases playtime. Since it's solo, I'm going to be playing two characters, as the learn to play guide said, that if you're playing the solo, grab two characters and play it, but we'll make it through in, in, anyway. Before we bounce down to the table, let's get started with the scenario book. So this is the scenario book. In regular Gloomhaven, and it's not that thick, right? In regular Gloomhaven, all these different tiles and maps and things come. The scenario book actually is your map and what we're going to be playing on. So I'm going to read the intro, and you know I got to put on my old man glasses. So I'm going to read the intro, and then we're going to hop down the table. We're going to get into it, I promise. So it says, scenario, beginning. It will be good to get back to the sleeping lion. After a fortnight going up and down the still river chasing a bad lead on a missing blacksmith, I haven't even read this yet. You can almost feel the warmth of the inn's hearth with Gloomhaven's walls when Gloomhaven's walls comes into view. You're almost home. To be fair, it's not just the blacksmith. An alarming number of people within the uh, poorer districts of the city have gone missing. Usually nothing comes of it, though just another poor soul forgotten out here on the edge of civilization. The blacksmith's wife, Sandy, however, managed to somehow scrape enough money together to hire you to find her husband. You're not sure where the money came from, but no matter the source, it couldn't have come easy, which makes it doubly painful to return to the city empty-handed. True, Sandy was a little light on the payment, but you are the Jaws of the Lion, one of the most well-known mercenary groups in this backwater dump of a town. This is a prequel to Gloomhaven. Surely, it can't hurt to take a charity case uh, every once in a while. Getting good jobs is about maintaining a reputation, after all. 
which is why you really need to get to the bottom of this and not return to the widow with nothing but uh, the calluses on your feet. Ugh. Also, you probably shouldn't call her a widow to her face. I mean, her husband is a bit. At least not until the fate of the blacksmith has been confirmed. Given, however, that none of these who disappeared have returned, the outlook is grim. As these cheery thoughts pass through your mind, you notice a uh, movement up ahead and immediately draw your weapon. The sun has dipped low in the sky, reducing visibility, but you can clearly see some ramshackle wooden barricades blocking the road in front of you. And sure enough, as you cautiously approach the scene, vermlings jump out from behind the obstructions, flashing crude swords and sharp sticks. You have to admit, you're quite tired from the day's journey, but still, these oversized rats certainly picked the wrong group of travelers to ambush today. You are the Jaws of the Lion, after all, and are always ready to show there is only one outcome for anyone who dares to threaten you. And that's the intro thing. A little bit long, but that's okay. It was still a lot of fun to read. So... Immediately then, the book says, go to this book to learn to play for new players, and then it walks you through your first scenario. So let's get down to the table, and let's check it out. Bing! So it's also a very small impact, right? This, this, is, not, this is not large scale. My gaming table is super tiny, and it fits with space to spare everywhere. So it, all, it works. This was the scenario book where I was just reading you from, so let's go ahead and get started. Flip it open. And as you can see, this is the first area. This is the map that we're going to be fighting on. The introduction up here says, The road back to Gloomhaven has been long, and now to get attacked by vermlings when all you want is a warm meal and a soft bed. Well, it makes you mad. Mad enough to kill these, <laughs> these mangy creatures before you collapse from exhaustion. Of course, the vermlings have some other plans. They gibber about wanting your coin and the meat on your bones. Nasty things, really. Best to ignore their ranting and end this quickly. So the special rules, which it says, it says make, uh, make sure every character's starting hand consists of six ability cards marked A, which we do. The Vermling Raiders will act as a, an initiative of 50, and we'll go through all of that stuff as we go through. So we'll, we'll place them down. First of all, let's introduce our characters. I picked the Hatchet. Cool guy. He's got axes, so he lives up to his name, and this is his mini. <laughs> so, pretty nice. I am not a painter of minis by any fashion. I've tried multiple times and failed horribly. So, I don't paint minis. But, for the people who do, good on you. This is a really cool mini to paint. So, he's going to start here. Our next character is the Red Guard. And there's stories about them on the back, but we'll get into that as we play through the whole scenario. And so, the Red Guard, this is a really cool looking guy. He's like a tiefling. So he's got cape, armor, shield. He's got like this sickle chain weapon that comes through. And he's going to go here. Now, we place these based on um, the level of things. So for two player, black means we don't place anyone. White means we place one regular. And yellow means an elite. So we've got a guy here coming to mess with us. And these are, there's just little standees that you can see. So this guy comes out, he's going to be a pain in my neck. Uh, we've got, actually, since we're top down, we'll pop that. We'll just put him there. How about that? Uh, this one's black, so nothing's there. This one's white, so that goes there. Black, nothing. That there. And then we got a yellow, which is an elite. So I'm going to keep the yellow one here, just kind of on the stand, so we know which one is the elite one. And what, what that means is that's the boss, right? That's the one we're fighting. We've got some barricades here that you can see, and we've got their, their attack card. We know that the elite guy has 10 health, the regular has five. They only move one space each, and they hit for two when they hit. So, and this is their modifier deck. My character, this is their cards, and these cards feel amazing. Like, I, I always tout about um, role players' cards, but these, these are, they spared no expense on this. These are quality cards. So the, this is his hand. And the red guard, this is his hand. So we've got all these different cards, and all of them go in your hand. Ooh, even if I mess them up, I don't even have to shuffle them. Your hand goes, actually, all your cards go to your hand. You don't have to shuffle them. And these are our modifier decks. This is the uh, creature's modifier decks, our health and magic tracks, and our initiative. 
So when I say modifier, it means that when I play a card, if I'm going to, if when I play a card that says do three damage, I pull a modifier card. It can be a uh, zero, which means it'll be three damage, a negative one, which means it'll be two, a plus one, as you see where I'm going with this, minus two, plus two. You even have a multiplier where you can say, okay, instead of it being three, it'll be nine. Uh, sorry, six. I can do math. Six. And, um, and there's also a complete miss, and that's how you crit fail. There's one card in here that is a crit fail. And as you notice, what I do to keep things above board, I shuffle the decks so you don't think that I set anything up. And this is the scenario. So immediately what the game does is it have you hop in the combat, and then you just begin. That's what we're going to do, because I'm excited. I played Gloomhaven once, remember? So, and, and one, the first scenario, well, I played it twice, but the first scenario both times. And you never have to shuffle these, but we're going to shuffle these up. So let's go ahead and keep things above board. Shuffle up. And these cards, like I said, they feel amazing. If you're able to get this game, buy it. It is it's great to take, down, take to the table. Family can play. As you can see, I immediately just got into a scenario where I can, what I can do. And I'll explain my movements. I'll explain everything so you're not like, oh, well, Kanji, what are you supposed to do? I, I have no idea this looks like a lot. It's really not. Like, I haven't even, un I haven't even lifted this thing up yet, right? And that's, that's where, like, all the icons are. Notice I'm not even using it right now. I think I'm going to use it just for the damage things, but the rest of these, I'm not going to touch this scenario. So, shuffle those up. Then the creatures. This is the enemies modifier. And these are the only cards you have to shuffle. So you're not having a bunch of cards that you're like, okay, well, I got to keep track of this deck, shuffle this deck, shift this over. You don't have to do any of that. So I'm going to put that over there with the monster. All right. So what we do, because I'm going to be playing both of them, we're going to run it. Look at this deck. Look at this hand first, right? You see these blue things here that you, that you can barely read? And I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can get a better view of it. So you see these blue things up here? All these do is these are describing what this says up top. So up top is the shorthand. This kind of breaks down exactly what the shorthand is. This is the initiative number, okay? So who's gonna go when? And there's two sides, there's a top and bottom, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through here and pick two cards. And what you do is you pick, and this is where it's gonna sound confusing, stay with me, stay with me. Um, if this sounds confusing, but as after I do it, you'll get into the flow. What you do is you pick the top of one, it doesn't matter which one, and the bottom of the other, and that's what, you, that's what your play is going to be for that turn. That's what I got. So it's three turns before I run out of cards, and I have to do a rest to get some cards back. And we'll go through all of that, so don't you worry about me losing you. So I've got the shield spike, which says two, ad two adjacent enemies suffers two damage. They're not going to get adjacent just yet because they move one. So I can probably move this guy, find something to move, and punch that guy in the face. Uh, this one has an attack of three or an attack of two. Attack of three and muddle. And this, this handy reference says muddle means it caused disadvantage. We'll get into all that. I can just do a move four, move three. So the top is attack. The bottom looks like a lot of move. A heal is in there just in case I get hurt. I need to be able to move and hit because I'm standing where I'm standing. And I start off with the red guard start off with 10 health, which it says on their board, and 8 health, which it says right here on the hatchet. So I got to move 3 of, of initiative 14, and the top one I need target and adjacent enemies. Actually, this one has good range. I'll keep that. So that's a move action. And then attack and muddle. That's what I'm gonna do. So usually when you play this game with others, you you can talk about you can say things like, I can attack that guy this turn, or I can get over there and take care of them. Don't worry, you move on to the other ones, but you can't tell them the attacks that you're gonna do on your card. That stays between you until initiative comes out. So that's what the red guard's gonna do. We're gonna go to the hatchet. Because it all happens all at the same time together. Uh, so the hatchet has a ranged attack because he doesn't need to move, but he needs to pick two cards. And I can try to find a double attack one as well. 
That's probably the best thing to do. Attack plus one attack to all your attacks this turn. Yeah, so that could work. Ooh, this one has a target. Now, I don't want to spend that. So you'll also you'll find that you'll find that like both of these are always good, and you're you you won't be in analysis paralysis, but you'll you'll definitely be in. I want to do everything on this card. So this one has an attack range three, which means range means I can move three squares away, and that's what I can hit that damage for. Um, so that's that. The hatchet won't need to heal just yet, so I'm gonna do that. So the hatchet picks these two cards, and we wanna go first, so we're gonna go with his lowest initiative, and it's gonna be, he's gonna do the top of this side and the bottom of this side to move, right? But he's gonna make that his initiative card of 18. And what you do at initiative time, you just throw it down, and you said, okay, initiative, I'm gonna pick the card that's going for initiative, I'm gonna put that down, and this is 14. So 14, 18, and we said from the scenario book that the vermin are 50. So the red guard goes first, then the hatchet, then the vermlings, and this is the initiative track. Now, I'm gonna come up with a different way of doing this because this is awfully tiny. You see my massive, ginormous, ridiculous, monstrous hands can't, like it's, so I'm gonna come up with something better for this for the next playthrough so we don't have to go through that. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attack and we're gonna go. He goes first, I'm gonna use my move three, which is the bottom one, but you don't have to move all three, so I'm just gonna move one, and then this attack happens. Um, I'm going to do one adjacent enemy to me, suffers three damage plus my modifier. So I'm going to draw a modifier card. The modifier card says zero. That means plus zero, nothing's gonna happen. It's just three, in terms of, it's just three attack. So I hit him for three, I'm gonna finally pop this open and take three, one, two, these little, and even these like wooden tokens feel so good, you know what I mean? They did a really good job. And he is number five. And you can see he's number five because it says so right there. So he's number five, so number five on the sheet will take three damage, and he's gonna get muddled. I inflict muddle on him. Which means that when he goes to attack me, he, he goes with this advantage. He'll pull two, two, um, two modifier cards and pick the lowest one. All right, so that ends my turn. I put the red guard's turn, he puts that in discard, he's done. Then we go over to this one. This one has a move and an attack. Now, one enemy with three hexes suffers three damage um, plus modifier. So basically, but it's disadvantaged because it's a range attack. So he flips that axe end over end and he throws it. One, two, three, he can see the monster, but let's keep it above board. He's gonna move one here. So one, two, three, he can definitely see the monster and he can throw it through people. Um, so he's going to move one. He doesn't have to move all five. And he's gonna attack for three plus his modifier. Plus one, so that makes it four. This creature's health is five. I just hit him for seven. He's dead. That muddle seems wasted. <laughs> but he's dead. And when he dies, we pull him off the board, put him on the side, and he's gone. For the first scenario, you don't, like, the loot and all that other stuff is not played because they're like, don't worry about all that. Just play the game. Enjoy what you got. So that ends their turn. Their initiative is over. Now it's... The vermin's turn. Now we look at their their sheet here. It says that they move one and they attack melee two. And I say melee because it's the sword. If it was a bow and arrow, it'll be ranged, and it would tell you that. So they're gonna move one. This is these are obstacles that they need to get around. And what they do is they go after the closest person. So the elite guy is gonna go here. This guy's gonna go here, and this guy's gonna go here. And then. We go into the next round, and that's it. You see how easy that is? It looks like a lot, but it's not. It's, it's fairly simple. You don't get these back because these are discarded, so now I'm down to four cards. So we say this one is a range two to mobilize. That elite guy hits for two. I don't want to take anything. That's my only move card, too. Notice that when I use that move card, I've only got one card where the bottom says move. Um, the first scenario says ignore these things up here because I know what they are, but you're just looking at the bottom stuff. So the bottom, I only have one move card, 
everything else is attacked. So I can move four, one, two, three, four. But I would want that immobilized. I don't want to lose that. Ooh, but if I do that, well, I can heal with this. Oh, this one has a range. I don't lose that either. Here we go, range two. So I can move, where's my move? I'm not gonna get the immobilized, but I wanna kill that guy. So I can move in range. So I'll do one, and my range says it's range two, and I gotta move here. I don't wanna lose that immobilized. Uh, that's my only move I got. Hmm. One, two, three. I could come here. This guy can't get to me. So that's with that one. I'll lose the immobilized. That's just how it is. That's what that's how it's gonna work. Um and I will that's the bottom. So the top ones here are targets all adjacent targets all adjacent enemies. So this is kind of like a sweeping arc. Or, no, it's a twirling stab, so it's like stabbing everywhere. Uh, two adjacent enemies suffer two damage, and this one has an attack range. I'm going to do those two. So I'm going to have my initiative be 63, and my 87, the hatchet, who has, he has a lot more movement. He can move four. Oh, but he's got this one with target as well. So he can move four, so he can go one, and you can move through your friends, you just can't move through enemies. So you can do one, two, three, four. Then he has a range three, and he could target three people. One, two, three. I want to get both of them. So this says up to three enemies within three hexes suffer one damage plus a modifier. And uh, plus a modifier for each and gain disadvantage and get muddled. So I can muddle both of them. That could hurt. Okay, so he has 10 health too. You probably should have saved those attacks for that guy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Not worth it. I'll do this one. And that'll be my and my move four. That's what I'll do. So I'll do a stop stopping power attack. I'll target one adjacent. Oh, it's adjacent enemy. So I'll do stopping power for attack where I'll range three and hit for three, and I'll move four at the bottom. So 25 will be my initiative for this one. They are 50 still, so the hatchet goes first because 25 against 63, right? You see that difference? So what we're going to do is the hatchet will do one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. And he's going to target um, three away, one, two, three. And he's going to attack with a modifier. It's a miss. That is the crit fail. The crit fail has come up, and the hatchet has missed. And guess where these go? Bam. <laughs> Awful. So this one is he's going to move four, one, two, three, right up to this guy. And then he's going to do the attack for three straight up. So three damage plus modifier. So full three damage, and that is number three. So it takes three. Uh, number three, I said, I think, which is the elite. Oh, I actually have a three damage token. So it takes three damage. And that is that. Then they go. This guy, he's gonna, they're going to attack the closest person, no matter who it is, the closest person. So he's going to attack me, and he's going to attack me for two. I can't defend that, so I take two damage. So my health track, which is set to 10, goes down to 8. This one moves one, so he'll move here. And then this one moves one, which he'll move here. Next round, right? So the next round, all I've got is two cards left. This one, all I have is two cards left, so we're doing whatever's happening here. So two adjacent enemies suffer two. Um, this one, oh, I can heal two. Heal, you are, you are one ally, two hexes, heals two damage. So I can heal two, or I can throw a potion and heal that guy, and then attack all adjacent enemies here. 
or just do an attack for two and two adjacent enemies. So this guy isn't adjacent yet. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to get hit again for three probably next time. So I'm going to heal and attack all adjacent enemies. So, but my initiative will be 38. This guy, his initiative is going to be 51 because that's the lowest number that he has. And he is going to... He's going to move, if he can move up to two or not at all, and then here he can attack two with a range of three and target two people. So I can move here and attack one, two, three, so I can attack both of them. So up to two enemies within three hexes suffers two damage, separate modifiers. So that's what he's going to do. So 41, 38, 51, 50. So how's it going to go? Is it's going to go red guard, vermlings, hatchet. Red guard goes first. He's going to attack this guy for two. So that guy's going to take, oh, plus modifier. So he's going to attack that guy for one. <laughs> so it suffered four damage. And then he's going to heal for two. Go back up to 10. This guy, uh, the Vermling's turn to go. Yeah, they were 50. The Vermlings turn to go. The Vermlings are going to, this first one is going to attack him for two, so knock him down to eight. This one's going to move up here one and then attack him for two, so he's going down to six. Yikes. And then this one is going to move one. I'm out of cards. So you're like, oh, is that the end of the game or did you mess up? No, I didn't. I'm out of cards. So what you do is you take a short rest, and it says so here in the book. Uh, did I pass that point? Uh, yep, short resting. And what you do with short resting is you take a short rest. Uh, at the end of your turn, all six of your ability cards should be gone on the third round. You can get your cards back by taking a short rest. So all characters rest now. So it says um, you draw all your cards back. You... Slip them around, and then you randomly lose one. Random when you short rest, when you do a long rest later on in the game, you get to pick which one you lose. So this one is gone for the entire scenario, which is just what we have here, and then it'll come back later. So you just kind of mix them up, because you're going to get to look at them all later. And you pull one out. This one. That's okay. It's a it was a ranged attack. It was the flaming ugh, flaming sickle. So that is gone forever. And because I like I said I have zero death space, I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna tap like it's tap. Turn it that way. It's gone. And then I get all my cards back in my hand. We're gonna do the same thing for the hatchet. Ba, ba, ba. And pick one. Oh, the heel. I lost the heel. So that goes away because my guy needs a heel. And this here, you see that circle at the bottom? When you see that, it says take all of these and shuffle it back into the deck because it wants you to crit fail again since there's only one on there. So I'm going to put this back in here and shuffle it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the hatchet did go. Uh, I, drew a, I drew a miss. The hatchet had a full-on miss. That hurt. That hurt bad. All right. So it shuffled back up, goes back on top, and then we begin again. Simple enough, right? It doesn't seem hard at all. So my guy's going to heal, right? That is what he's going to do. Uh, he is going to... Wow, a 90. Well, at least he goes before the verm. Uh, so the heal I need at the bottom, he needs that. And then he's got this attack three that inflicts muddle. That elite has to go. So that's what he's going to go with. Hatchet is going to... Oh, I'm upside down. Uh, let's see. We've got center mass, double throw, stopping power, close cut, and disorienting strike. So that's just one damage on three targets, but there's only two targets there. 
um, three damage on three targets with modifier. That could be helpful. And he doesn't want to move at all. So this is also a three damager. Add plus one attack to all your attacks this turn. And the three damage on three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. And that's what he's going with. So 35, 64. They're still 50. Let's get into it. So um, 35, 41. So 35, go, the hatchet goes first. He's going to target two, both of them and hits both. One enemy within three hexes suffers three damage plus modifier. So, oh, so it's not split up. I got that wrong. It wasn't target. It was what's, add plus one attack to all your attacks this turn. Cool. So it's going to be four to that guy. Modifier. Yes, so he takes four damage. He's already suffered four. He's at eight. So I got a plus three in here somewhere. So six, seven, eight. He's got 10 health, and he's already suffered eight. Eight. <laughs> uh, so that's good. That hit him. That goes to discard. Then this one goes. I'm going to heal for two. So he's at six, remember. So he's going to go up to eight. <coughs> Excuse me. He's going to go up to eight, and then he's going to attack for three and inflict muddle with modifier of nothing. So three damage. So three six. So he kills this creature. I hit him for over. He took over ten damage. He dies. If he dies, he dies. So he's gone. This goes in the discard, and that is their turn. He's going to attack for two, so he's going to hit him for two, knocking him down to six. And he's going to move one, because he sees this guy, so he's headed that way. And then we begin again. So you see how this works, right? All right, so we've got an attack for three and a mobilize. That's happening. And then an attack for two. And that thing has five health, so I'm beating this thing to death. That's going to end that creature's life. So uh, next one, we're going to do, he's dead. So, he, so what I would say is, I got this guy. Don't worry about it. Move on to the next one. And what he's going to do is he's going to do his three attack. And then the rest are just moves. I wish I had a double attack on that. So he's going to do his three attack at 24. And this is just a one attack. So I don't care about that. So there you go. Huzzah. So 14, 24, 50, which means we're back to red guard, hatchet, firmly. So this guy's gonna attack. He's gonna attack first for two. So he hits him for two. He has five health, I'm gonna kill him. And then he hits him for three here. Oh, the modifier, the modifier. Plus one. See you later. <laughs> Hit him plus one, so plus one happens. So I hit him for two, plus one, he dies. Uh, he's three, three damage, and then three, plus one. Goodbye, he dies. Then, that ends that. Then this guy's gonna attack, and he's going to range three, one, two, three, four, so not enough, so he's gonna move up one, so he's one, two, three, with the move two, and then he's gonna attack with range three, and plus one, four. So that one takes four damage. So I'll take a three and a one, and he is number two. So he takes two, so he's got, he's got three damage on him already, two left to go. That ends that turn. His turn, he moves one, so he gets closer. We can't draw two cards because we only have one card left, so we have to take a rest. That's what we have to do. So we grab one. Grab this, put them all together. We don't get back that guy, and we do the same thing of ditching a card. Okay, so uh, let's see. We're going to do, 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 do this guy. An attack three and muddle is lost. And we grab this, these together. Okay, so we do this guy. Oh man, that was a good one. 
I lost the uh, the center mass, which did three three range, three damage, which would have killed the creature. But we're gonna kill him now anyway. Uh, take a look at our hand. All I need to do is get hit, get him, and punch him in the nose. Oh, that's 84, 14. That will get me there and punch him in the nose, and that'll take him out. Um, so, so my my thing is, I'll kill him this round. Just burn whatever you don't need. But it's the end of the scenario. So, uh, we'll grab a move and a range attack just in case I miss. Just in case I miss, because I can. Either one of them could do the crit fail, right? So 14 initiative, 25 initiative, 50. So first things, I'm gonna move three, one, two, just to get right in his face. And then I'm gonna attack him. Oh, it's a range one, sorry. I don't wanna go all the way because if I get that close, it'll be a disadvantage. I'm gonna move up one, range two, uh, and it'll do a mobilize minus one. So it's one damage. This is why I did both. So it's four, he's still alive, but he's muddled. And that is that. Then this one, there is a plus one to all attacks this turn. And then, oh, no, that's melee. Let's do it this way. So there's a move, and then a range three, two targets. So I'm going to move back one, and then do one, two, three. Perfect. And then I'm going to attack him with plus one. He's dead. He's dead. So he's gone. And that's the first scenario. That is amazing. That is awesome. We get, at the end of the scenario, we get back all the stuff that we lost and discarded and whatnot. And we move into scenario two. Scenario two. So you saw there wasn't a lot to it, right? There was just the, you come in, you punch stuff up, and then you continue back. You will reshuffle these, reshuffle that. I go back up to full health, which is 10 for this guy. And we move on to scenario two. And I'm only going to do scenario one and two tonight. So I'm not going crazy and ham on it, right? So scenario two, so it says here, when you go in the book and you finish it, uh, it says, that's scenario two rules. You've won. You've beat scenario one. Congratulations. You're awesome uh, on completing scenario one. Read the conclusion, which is this. The conclusion says you wipe the, you wipe the blood of the last vermling from your face and your thoughts return to the sleeping lion. Surely they've got a stew ready by now. It would be so perfectly warm and soothing, and it's right through that gate. So close. You can already taste it. But then another thought comes. It is highly unusual brazen, really for a pack of vermlings to operate this close to the city. Could they be behind the string of disappearances? It's a long shot, but one worth investigating, especially considering their ambush site doesn't look like their base of operations. There's probably a nest nearby that, uh, with any luck, will have more information on the missing blacksmith and treasure. Treasure would be nice. So, new location, uh, hole in the wall, two so what that means is we go to this guy the lovely lovely stickers that you get from the game right and you see that new location b2 and what b2 means is you come over here on this lovely map i put the first sticker down already here's b here's two comes here so we take off the sticker And we match it up because they make the sticker look like the wall <laughs> so you can match it up. So we put it there. There we go. And it looks like it's part of the city, just like before. So B2, we got it hole in the wall. So we, we would put a check mark. There's a little small box here. And we put, uh, let me zoom in so you can see. There's a little small box here that we could check off and say we got that scenario completed. And there's the hole, a hole in the wall, the next scenario that we're going into. So let's get back down to the table. The stickers are fantastic. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Then it says scenario one complete. What we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade because having those cards constantly is going to drive me bananas. And you get these lovely boxes with the symbols of your character on them, which matches the symbols that are here. And we're going to reach in there. 
we are going to grab grab the card slots and we're going to grab the b cards there's two of them so now we've added one two b cards to our hand we grab our scenario sheet and put those over here so this is how you keep track and save games and stuff like that like i'm not once again i'm not doing anything complicated or crazy i'm just grabbing these two two b cards throwing them down grabbing the scenario book and putting them up and they say at this point um you can this is like saving your game so you give them names and you put them on and that's where they go through so I need names for these creatures. So what do you think their name should be? The hatchet, I don't want to call them the hatchet. Um, this is the hatchet box. So I will call him, hmm. What's a good name for a hatchet? Just put it in the chat if you're interested. What's a good name for a hatchet? I think I'll call him, uh, I don't know. Any ideas? Any ideas? Nothing? Okay. Uh, I will call him Leonard. That's right. I'm original. The hatchet's name is now Leonard because you did not let me know a good name. <laughs> and the red dar's name is um, I will call him you know what? Because today is a today is a, a, a an odd day. Um, do some work stuff. I'm gonna call the red guard guy Cody. So Cody is his name. So Cody and Leonard. That's right. We're original with this. Cody the red guard and Leonard the hatchet. So now we'll take. I'll put this over. Here. We'll put these over here on the side. So we've completed scenario one, we're still level one, so our health is still the same. And all we did was just upgrade our cards. Um, wait, what is it? Also mark the one next to level two since you are level one. Provided you are happy with your select, uh, at this point. So if you weren't happy with your character selection, choose another character. This is your last chance to switch them before the story gets underway. Cody and Leonard are fine. You'll need to start a new character. Provided you are happy with your selection, you should now name your character and write it in the name field, which we did. Also mark one next to level two. We leveled up. So we did level up. So, okay. So also mark next to, what? Also mark the one next to level two since you are level one. Oh, since I'm level one. We are level one. Okay. So it's just recording where we are. We, we didn't level up. I was like, I could, do with, I could do with that type of help. Okay. And all other areas of the character sheet will be worried about in the future scenario. All right. Cody and Leonard are saved. So then we got our new card. So now we've, we've leveled up some more. And we've saved. We're moving on to scenario two. We flip the page. Introduction. Ooh, this looks complicated. Introduction. The tracks are easy to spot. Vermlings have never been known for their subtlety. You follow the uh, scratching, scratching and indicators of a body being dragged until you find yourself approaching the walls of Gloomhaven. The sun is very low, but something isn't right. This isn't just a shadow cast across a lower section of the wall, it's a hole. The Vermlings have made a nest for themselves by burrowing into the wall itself. How industrious. You crouch low and try to sneak closer, but they must have guards watching the entrance. There is a shrill shrieking, and then a number of Vermlings jump from the dark, brandishing their dull, poorly made weapons. No choice now but to defend yourself. Luckily, you managed to get your second win, but you will definitely need a nice long bath after this ordeal. Special rules. Make sure each creature has swapped out, uh, sw has swapped out two of their ability cards marked A for the B for the same name, so we don't add on. Good to know we get b and we swap out two of a for b so we're still working with six cards all right so what do i want to lose that i don't care about 
Heal is important. I'm not losing heal. Where is heal? So, even that. The hatchet doesn't need to move much. This low attack of three won't, is unnecessary. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Because this one looks like an upgrade from close cuts to close cuts. Oh, and center mass to center mass. Okay, so we're just swapping out blow for blow. Alright, I see what they did here. Yep, I get it. So, Leonard, you take those. And for the B ones, what are we swapping out? We're swapping out uh, Flaming Sickle and Desert Knight. I see what they did. Desert Knight, Flaming Sickle. And that comes out. So we've just upgraded those skills. All right, got it. Understand. Following direction. Then we set up the board. Um, remember to flip over an ability card for the Vermlings as we go. I didn't do that. I didn't do that during the first scenario. The first scenario, they were just punching me. I didn't roll those over to see if they multiplied up. Yikes. So let me make sure I do that from now on. Um, so two player, we've got white, white, black, nothing there, black, nothing there, black, nothing there, white, white, and white. Here we go. And we start off. He's going to be here, and no, nope, Leonard's going to be here, and Cody will be over here. And I'm not, I, I don't know how I missed that. Please forgive me. You'll probably watch through the first scenario and be like, you should throw this game away because you're terrible. But this is part of learning. Get over it. Um, I will make sure that I pull the modifier decks for these creatures from now on. Matter of fact, just to make sure I don't lose sight of them, let me move their deck over here. It's probably because it was over there and out of the way I didn't see it. We live, we learn, we get on with our lives. I'll be pulling modifiers. They did a lot of damage. They could have knocked him down, but they didn't. So let's get it right. And this is all part of learning. This is the great thing about this game, too, is that if you mess that up, you messed it up, and you can just fix it later. All right, let's get into it. Uh, so whenever these ones die, oh, there's some stuff I need to set. Stuff I need to set. Uh, money. There's some money coming out now. So we've got some new icons coming onto the board. Do, 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 do. These are traps. If I step on them, they will not be good for my health. And there should be a treasure chest. So, simple enough, you grab those, you put them on there, the book tells you exactly what to do. It says, place one money token in each hex depicting this icon, a trap. Um, there is a door, these doors are hexes, which is the blue here. Um, doors separate different rooms in the scenario, only the monsters in the room the characters are in are set. In are set up at the beginning, so these are. Okay. I'm learning. So this is a door. Until I get to that door, I don't know what's behind it. Um, we, I mean, we could see what's behind it because the book is here. And they're in Gloomhaven, but since there are the tiles, you just don't put the tiles down. But we only see these monsters right now, so we don't feel overwhelmed. It's just three monsters we have to fight. There's two coins that are on there and two traps. Um, so we don't place anything there until a character can move onto a door hex as part of a normal movement. When they do the first time, the door is then open. An activation token is placed on the door to indicate it's opening and all monsters in the newly reveal room are set up. This is called revealing a room. Then we get the new basic functions. We get loss actions. There's looting that's happening. Area effects, which the hatchet got some new area effects abilities. Treasures, which will show up when we get closer. Pushing and pulling, which is yanking stuff into us and not. And um, now there's a new mechanic. There's a couple new mechanics. The first new mechanic is that these monsters get a modifier deck, just basic vermin. Two, three, four, basic vermin. So this deck is this deck of four is what they go with. So now remember before when we were saying that the monsters had an initiative of 50? Now their initiative cards are on these guys. These ones right here. And you can see the initiative up in the top corner. 
right? 36, 59, 85, 50. And how they move and how they attack are also different, right? Those are modifiers added on. They still move, there's all of these are regular monsters, so they still move one and attack two, but these also buff per round how they fight. Okay, so basically, because this area has two separate rooms of monsters, you may start a round where there are no monsters remaining on the map. In that case, do not flip over a new card and just take characters until the door is and just uh, take characters until the door is open. Once the second room is revealed, if a monster ability card has not been flipped for the Vermling Raiders, that um, that that round immediately flip one. Either way, it's revealed monster. So every round we flip one to see how things go, and that's just how it. Is. Um, not every round. Sorry, because this scenario is two parts. We flip. They act immediately after the character's turn, signified by the place on the initiative track. Okay, so it's basically we flip, and this is how all the verling, vermlings are going to go. So we mix these up, we shuffle these up, bub board. Hey, Brian, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome to the live stream. I already made a goof because I didn't pull the, um, the modifiers for the Scenario 1 vermlings, but eh. So there's four of these. We only pull, we pull one of them because it could be up to any. And that's how the vermlings are gonna act. If when I kill, if when I kill all these vermlings, we can pull another one to see how they're gonna act. So we're gonna put this up here. And because we came here, we're gonna flip one over, and this is how they're gonna act. So it says screaming shout. Their initiative is 85. They're going to push target all adjacent enemies, and they're gonna push. Push means the target is forced to move up to X, uh, which is one one hex away from the targeting creature each individual movement must place the targets um spatially farther away from the targeting creature so when they do a when they attack they're going to do a push also there's the shuffle this deck at the end of the round so it's telling you what to do because that circle so this initiative that they're coming in is 85 so they're high up but when they attack they're going to push me for one and they're going to hit me for stuff for stuff so, um, and what abilities will they perform on their turn? So, they're, so on their turn, they're going to attack me plus one. So two plus one, and they got ranged attack. So that means that they can, they can attack me from far away, two, two hexes away, as this says. So two hexes away is going to be their attack plus this number. So you see how the game kind of gets dynamic, and it's different, the different things that they can do. So they'll push me away and then range attack me. So they're basically the guard, the archers, that have come out to take me on. I always make mistakes in Gloomhaven proper. Doesn't matter as long as you, I know, right? I'm having, it. this is amazing. I'm having so much fun right now. So we, we gotta see who goes first. So let's pop this up. I've got my new B skills. Um, they have five health. So I want to kill them as quickly as I can. I'm not getting rid of this move six. And there's a new ability that happens on these cards, Lost Action. If I use this bottom ability that you see here with this X, this card's gone. It's, it's like I took a long, it's like one of those long rest cards where it just goes away, it's discarded. It's a lost card until the end of the scenario. Uh, so moving is probably something I don't want to do. I can, I can attack for two and disarm a trap. I can pull a creature, do a range thing. So basically I take the sickle from the red guard, I throw it at the creature, hook him, and I pull him close to me. So I do through two damage and pull him close to me, or I can loot one. You don't have to use an ability to loot. Looting works is when you end your turn on a square with money, you loot it. That's just how it goes. And it says place one money token down, um, in addition, the money's token set up at the start of the scenario. One money token is also placed anytime a monster dies. So when a monster dies, he drops money. We just you you can't say okay, the monster's here. I'm trying to get here. I'm gonna go boom, 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 and I pick up the money. You have to end your turn on the money to pick up the money. That's how it works. So let's see. Uh, what is he gonna do first? Well, we're gonna try to get to one of these guys and punch him in the face before we push it before they push us. And there's a nice little thing there to do a nice little AOE. Two adjacent enemies suffer two damage. If I could do that and move 
And that will work. That'll get me close enough. So I'm going to do the shield spikes, which I'm going to slam two adjacent enemies. No attack mod cards is drawn for this. It's just two, they suffer two damage. And then this one is move, and my initiative is going to be the 14. The hatchet has some lovely abilities. His new um, disorienting barrage, what was it, close cuts? Now is, you see the symbol here? This is an AoE. So area of effect for people who don't know what AoE means. And that means that I stand here in the gray and everything in the, in the uh, red gets hit. And this is also like a lost card if I do this. I'm not trying to do that just yet. That's gonna come in handy. Um, I could target three creatures and hit them all for one. I have a target two, here we go. I could target two creatures and hit them for two, da uh, hit them for two damage from three away. So I would go one, two, three. I would have to move. So that one could work, and then I need to move. Move, move, target one adjacent enemy. Nope. Move and push. Move five. This move and push I can use. Ooh, that attack three seems so delicious, though. Range three. I can kill one of those creatures now. Because when they go, they can hurt me. The move. I'm going to do move two. I'm going to do those two. All right. So our initiative is 85. 24 for the hatchet. 14 for, um, for the red. 24 for Leonard. 14 for Cody. And yes, I named them Leonard and Cody, Brian. <laughs> I asked for names and I didn't get anything. So Leonard and Cody it is. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, we are going to do the bottom half of the 14, which is move three. And we're gonna come here and stand there. And then we're going to do the top half of this without drawing a modifier. No, no attack modifier is needed. They both just suffer two damage and they're number one and number five. So number one suffers two damage. Number five, I'll grab a three, four, and five. And number five suffers that much damage. So that ends Cody's turn. Leonard's turn. Leonard's going to do um, a move and then an attack range three. So he's going, well, first he's going to do attack range three. It doesn't, when you pick initiative, that doesn't mean you have to use that card first. You can use it in any way. That's just the one that's saying that's the initiative I'm going to put down. Um, and how that works and how that synergizes is, oh, I need to shuffle while I talk. How that works and how that synergizes is basically it says, well, I need to do this. You know, this, this is me talking to next player or a uh, total of four. I think I could take that creature out. Yeah, I could probably do some damage to that, but not enough to kill it. If you could do enough, I could go first and then I could bring it down so that you can kill it. Do you think like that can work? And the person could be like, yeah, I think that can work. Or, no, I, I, I changed my mind. I think I could take it down, so go face something else. Uh, but I'd like to go first if that's okay. And that's where the initiative comes into play, right? So it's not just, it's not just me saying I'm just going to put down cards and I don't need to talk to you. There's a lot of team play in here where you need to talk to each other and work things out. All right. So I shuffled his deck. I'll shuffle his when it comes to that time. All right, so this one's going to attack. Um, Leonard's going to attack. He's going to attack range three and hit for three. Both of them have suffered two damage. Why did I pull a three? I don't know why I did that. That was weird. So both of them have suffered two damage. Whoever he hits, barring modifiers, is going to die. Um, this creature moves one. So, and he's going to get hit no matter what, but that's okay. He's red guard. That's his job. He's got a shield, half a shield. Um, so I'll kill this creature. So Leonard's going to move one and then do, actually, he's going to, uh, no, he's going to attack first. One, two, three. He can see the creature because my hex can see its hex. And so he's going to attack it for three with a modifier. Minus one. Awesome. It's not. So basically, he's down to four health. So my red card's in a little bit of danger. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Uh, I was going to use the move two to get the coin. 
He's got eight health. I don't need him getting beat up. That's unfortunate. But we need to advance in the game. It's going to happen. So he's going to move two to stop there. Discard that hand. And he's going to pick up that coin. Pick that. There we go. So this creature sees this creature and sees this creature. So it says, well, who's going to go? Who is it going to attack? Comes down to initiative. It's going to attack the first person with initiative. So he's going to attack the red guard. He's going to attack the red guard. And he's going to move one. And they're not dumb. They're not going to step on their own traps. But they can trigger their own traps. I can push them into traps. So, um, which I probably might do for that one. So they're going to hit for when they hit, they're going to push. So they're going to attack. So it's going to be three plus modifier. Four, <laughs> oh gosh, for the first one. So it's going to be four. Oh, but it's ranged. Shuffle this. It's ranged, so it's with, it's ranged. Ooh, 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 ooh. That, that makes things better. Here's why I'm excited. Ranged attacks are denoted by the range symbol that you see. If someone is close to you, then basically ranged is a disadvantage. If an attack has disadvantage, the attacker draws two cards and apply the difference. But it doesn't say the mobs have it, but every ranged attack should. Ranged attacks are denoted by the red X how far it can go, which means one enemy with X's attacks range. Range cannot be counted through, uh, cannot go through a wall. If your word range is not used under an attack, the attack is considered melee, which means it only targets adjacent enemies. So, but it doesn't say... Some effects, such as conditions, follow a page uh, that gives you disadvantage. And an attack, an attack cannot have multiple instances of advantage or disadvantages. Even though, oh no, it just happens. He just puts an arrow in my face. All right. So I take two, three, four damage. So I was at 10. I'm down to six. I'm down to six. Yikes. Then the other one is going to attack. Yay! Yeah, I shuffled this deck at the beginning of the game if you're wondering. Hey, dragon, how's it going? So the other one's going to attack. He's going to attack for two. Oh, and they push. So it pushes him back. So he's going to move one because of initiative. He'll move. I'll, I'll have him move here. Here. And this one attacked. He didn't move yet, so he's going to move one. So he pushes and walks. That one's going to move there, attack him again. It's going to be a horrible, horrible time. So he's going to attack for two, three. I think my red guard guy is dead. <laughs> Times two. <laughs> so basically it's six. He hits him for six. Ouch. So I had six health left, and just like that, Red guard goes to zero and is exhausted. He is out for the rest of the fight. Because that's how that works. So he's out for the rest of the fight. He cannot get back up. No pass go. No collect $200. And I reshuffle the deck. Red guard got knocked out by two monsters. Got my dice from Chelsea. I ordered two days ago to track health. Dice are a great thing to track health. These spinners are cool, uh, 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 but I think I'm going to do the same thing too, Dragon. I'm going to get some... Uh, I got a... Here's my bag of dice. <laughs> so in there somewhere, I've got blood dice. I can use that. And I've got my chaos dice, which are blue, so I can track mana with that. So we reshuffle this. The hatchet is in some trouble, but he is going to make it work. Wow, that modifier was awful. I could have killed one, and then my guy would have still been alive. Oh, Chessex. Not Chelsea. Chessex. Uh, that's where I got... Um, Chessex, that was the one that I was saying where I got, like, the... Um, the Dragon Con die that I have, as well as the, um, the other dice that I used in Gloom and Kill for. Those were all Chessex dice. That's awesome. All right, so... Next round... Cody's down, it's just Leonard. And Leonard needs to do something. Leonard can move. So 
So Leonard can move. You, if he gets here, he can inflict three damage on both, plus modifier. I need to kill them because I'm running out of cards. And when you run out of all cards, you lose the scenario. And I don't want to start burning rests. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I don't need to burn that just yet. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a move. So 25. This says at the beginning of the round, reshuffle this back into the deck. So they're going to get a new ability. I like Cheslix. Whenever they come to, um, whenever I go to Dragon Con convention, they are always the, the booth that is slammed with people for the entire con. All right. Okay. So, new abilities. Uh, no modifiers to their attacks. Their their initiative is fifty nine. They can target two, range two. So basically, they can hit two people for two damage, two modifiers as it goes. So he goes first. He's going to. So this says one adjacent enemy cannot move until the end of its next turn, then moves up to three hexes away. And I can't do. Okay, I'm going to move two, attack, and then move one. I, I move and then I attack. That's just how that works. So he, this guy is removed from play. He's going to go one, two, three to get both of them there. And then he's going to, um, he's going to use his attack ability up here to hit, to do a uh, cross cut. So he's going to cross cut with both his axes to hit them both for three. Hits. The first one for three kills him. Oh, my word. And so that's one. And then he's going to hit the other for three. Four hits him. Where were you? So <laughs> kills that one. And that is his turn. Leonard's still left to go. He's got two moves left before he needs the rest. Uh, that's the end of his turn. This creature's going to move one. Leonard is going to, he can move five and attack range two. So he can put some hurt on that creature before he has to rest. So I'm going to move five and then attack um, range three for two. So one, two is good enough for the rest for him. Uh, yeah, because that's, oh, I can do that. I can do, I, I have to end my turn. I can't just move in and move out. So I'm going to come here and hit this creature one, two, three uh, for two damage. Come here, attack for two with mod. Oh, initiative is 18, that's 59, just to let you know. Mod zero, so the creature takes two damage. Where is my times two, right? And he is number three. And, uh, let's see. and that ends his turn, the creature's turn. It will move closer. He has to take a rest, so let's see what card he will leave you. Blah. Let's see what card he will lose. So let's see what happens. And poor Cody is out. But Leonard will fight on. Alright. So I'm going to lose uh, this one. My attack three. My strongest one. The stopping power one. I lose. Gone. Bye bye. Alright. So, and this, they, they are not moving. Oh, they don't move this round. Okay, so it stays there. So it says they don't move this round. Okay. So the round ends. Draw the next one. Move plus zero. They will move to avoid um, being adjacent to their focus. Their attack will have minus one, but it's range two. So we're, we're at a range battle here. Um, it's range two. They can move though. I don't need the sweep and strike just yet. He's not hurt. I still got my three. Yeah, because I hit you for two, so that could take you down. Um, I gotta move five. I'll do the move two. So I'll do the move two. So 24 for um for initiative. They have 36. So I go first. I'm going to um, attack, range three, one, two, three, plus one, four, 
He already had two damage, so he only has five health. He dies. And then I'm going to move two, so one, and that will end that, and I'll pick up that coin. All right. I have a move that's a throwaway. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I want that range attack. I need to be able to open this door so I can unlock the last creatures there. Um, so I will... He doesn't need to heal. But he'll do that. Yeah, he'll do, he'll do these two. So he is going to... Uh, he is going to do this. His initiative is 18. He's going to move for 5. 1, 2... Open the door, because you can't keep moving. This could be bad. So let's put all these things out that we had out before. Actually, two, three. Nope, two, here. And then he'll open the door. Sorry. Uh, actually, he'll be here. He'll be there. That's okay. I don't want to get weird with it, because it says, uh, the door hexes designated on the monsters is set up. Go ahead and set up doors, um, but don't place any monsters on the icons depicted on the other side. Uh, move to the door and open it. Opening doors. Yep. So he opens the door. There's two more monsters in there that we need to face, but he still has his attack to do. So that was a move, then his attack. Target's two, three distance away. He can see this creature for two damage, so he's going to go ahead and throw for two damage. Minus one, so the creature's going to... Wait, wait. Did I miss a reshuffle? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Minus one. So creature number two takes one damage. Um, that ends his turn. One card left. This creature is going to... They are... They will move to avoid being adjacent to their targets. So they are ranged this round. They're going to do two damage. Minus one. So they're going to do one damage coming in. They're going to... So plus modifier zero so it's just going to be one damage so he goes down to seven and then this creature um that obstacle they said only walls you have to be able to see through yep only walls you have to be able to see through you can you can go through stirf so he is going to move one but his range is two so one two one two one, two, one, two. He can't hit me. So, sweet. I'm going to take a nice little dirt nap. Get back my cards. And please don't lose any ranged ones. Please don't lose any ranged ones. Please, hope, please. Don't lose any ranged ones. Uh, let's see. Alright. Alright. Oh, shit. Ooh. I lost a heal and a movement. That's dangerous. All right. So what I got left? I got four cards, which means I've got two rounds left to kill these creatures before I lose. Because I go one, two, one round, two round. Yeah, one round, two round, three rounds left. Three rounds left. All right. Um, I'm all about that range, about that range, no trouble. Uh, so move two, attack for three. So and my initiative is 24. This is not a recycle to re-roll a new initiative, so that's what they still have to go with. If I remember correctly, and I want to read that to make sure, Basic Vermillions, during the card selection after all characters have revealed their cards, flip over the top card from the deck, set currently on the map. See how the book just kind of walks you through it all? Uh, this card will now determine the monster's set initiative and the abilities that they have added on to that attack. A monster only performs the abilities written on the card. If it doesn't move, the monster doesn't move. Okay. Because the scenario has two separate rooms, monsters can start... Once the room is revealed, if the monster's ability card has not been flipped for the Vermilion Raider, that round immediately flipped either way. So it already was. Um, otherwise, to act normally in the initiative order. So 24. Um, before I move, I'm going to attack first, and it's going to inflict Muddle to three away. 
Ooh. And I target three. I could do three damage with this. And he only has two. So I could come here and it would be one, two, three because it goes through that barricade. It's just walls that block that attack. And one, two, which will do it. So I'm going to move one there. And then I'm going to target both of them and fire. Uh, no, that's not what I was doing. I was moving here and then firing attacking here. I wasn't doing muddle. Uh, so I'm doing three attack to take this guy out. So I'm going to shoot him in the face uh, first with my modifier. Plus zero, so three. Plus one is four. I didn't, the modifier would have been fantastic for that. And then I'm going to move. Uh, do I have any moves? I would lose it if I moved. Okay. So, and then I'm going to move here. And I do that because my next attack is going to be that AoE to do three damage plus one four. Um, or, well, I get, because if I use this, if I use this card next, I lose it. And like I said, we've only got three rounds left until I lose. So um, I hit him for three plus zero mod. Um, so, and then I move closer. And this is still a one, two. He still has two to get to me, so he's going to have to go around. So I'm going to harry him as best as I can. I really wish that would have worked. Did I mess that up? No, that's fine. That's good. So he's going to go, he, he doesn't have any movement, uh, well, movement plus zero, so he has the two movement, the one movement, but his range is two, so he can hit me, minus one, um, so he's going to do plus one, so he's doing three damage to me. So I go from seven to four, and then this one can't get to me yet, so he's going to come here, because he can't go through barricades with his two to hit, so he moves one. Next attack, I gotta kill this creature before this one pops up and then try to kill that creature next, is um, I'm going to do initiative 25 to do the swipe attack, that's why I move forward, plus one for all my attacks this round. So that's what I'm gonna do. I go first, flip this, so it's two instead of three, but I hit him and I kill him because he had four on there anyway. Really wish I would have killed him last round. Um, and that is that. So these go to discard. Oh, and he moves one. All right. I cannot beat him this round. So yeah, because <laughs> I lose a card. Um, so this one, the AOE one's gone. Only the modifiers can save my life now because I've got this is it. So I'm going to do a two move and a range three attack for 24 as my initiative to attack him. Please be it multiplied by two. Please. So I, I got to move two, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. I can see him. So I fire. This is it. Here we go. Here we go. Minus one. He takes two damage on level four. And that is that for me. Then he attacks. He doesn't move, uh, no modifier and move, but he can move up one to get the two, minus one on his attack, plus one. So he hits me for, so he hits me for two. Oh, it would have been four, it would have been five, and then two would have been three. So three health left. I don't have another card to draw. So let's read what happens when that happens. It is possible that all characters will become exhausted before you finish the scenario resulting in failure. If this happens, you will need to set up the scenario again from the beginning and replay it. All money, tokens, and experience discussed in uh, scenario three on page 20, which is later on, earned up until the scenario was failed are carried over into the next attempt. All rewards from looting treasure tiles are also kept, but treasure tiles can only be looted once. So that means I keep the money, I don't lose it, I got exhausted, I have to do the scenario over again, but I didn't get to the treasure, so that's okay, but we have to restart the scenario. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. 
One last time. One last time. Hold off. That stuff off. You restart the scenario. There's one here. One here. Sorry, that's black. And one here. That's there. If it says uh all all money tokens and experience earned up until the scenario was failed are carried over into the next attempt. Ooh. So mo money, mo money, mo money. The treasure tiles can ev only ever be looted once, so they reset. Keep it trucking. So let's go ahead, get all this back, and basically what we do is we redo the scenario. Reshuffle. It's the hatchet. So this is where, like, someone can say, okay, this is a little, you know, like, oh, man, that was awesome. I need to rethink my strategy. They can save, which is what I did, right, by writing down Cody and Leonard's name. And um, then you can just come back and do it another time. How many scenarios, uh, for those who've played Jaws of the Lion already, have you lost any scenarios yet, or have you just been awesome enough and kind of blazed through it? Our last shuffle. Shuffle and go, shuffle and go. I like this game a lot. Like, it's a lot of fun. It's quick, too. I finished Scenario 1 really fast, so it's really quick. Scenario 2, it's only because the Red Guard guy fell. <laughs> when he fell with that, with that multiplier, what could I do? I mean, then it, it, it was kind of a sure thing, but it happens. Uh, yeah, none of these was shuffle, so shuffle these back. Shuffle them back. All right. So it says money and stuff are or money is taken over and you reset the scenario so you get more money. You get some nice reward, you know, just to feel like you didn't lose anything. And when you get into Gloomhaven proper, you'll be able to um you'll be able to spend that money and upgrade stuff. Alright, cool. Let's do it. Red guard guy. Cody's back. Hey. Bond's thumbs. Um, so oh, need to reshuffle this too. Look in the way, no cheating, no cheating. All right. Monsters will get. Hey, look what I had before, and after the round, I get the reshuffle. So, all right. Oh, you go back up to ten, my friend. You are not at zero anymore, and you go back up to eight. And once again, you're like, how do you know, Candy? How do you know that he's eight? Because here on his card, it says level one eight, and this one level one ten. All right, so. Yeah, that multiplier stung. So their initiative is 85. Um, we got a sweeping hit, right? Let's try this again. I'm gonna go for uh, target all adjacent and all adjacent enemies suffer two damage plus a separate modifier for each. So there's that, and then I need to move to them, and then I need to move to them. This one. So initiative 38, he's going to go first. I want him to go first because I want him to go up, arc swipe all of them, um, and take off two. And then the hatchet, I want him to come in and mop up with a three target strike on multiple. This one. Nope, that's one damage. I need you to do more. I need you to do more. More, please. More, please. He'll do two target two, range two. Um, range two, he'll have to move. This one is muddle. 
but it's just one damage. So he'll do that one for the move. And he's going to try to kill one of them <laughs> again. So move this damage up. So he's going to go 35 on his initiative. Uh sorry, 51 on his initiative. So he goes next. See how I did that? I was like, this was 38, this was 35, but I want I want um Cody to go first and then Leonard to follow up. So Leonard's gonna go initiative 51, Cody's gonna go initiative 38. Monsters are 85, so they go first. Cody goes first, he's gonna move four, one, two to get right here, and then he is going to um He's going to do his uh, twirling stabs to do two damage to all adjacent enemies, which are these two guys. First one, which is the top one, it's a miss. But he's going to die again. Second one, it's the bottom one. It's minus one. So instead of two damage, that one takes one. And that's number one. Huh. And at the end of the round, this symbol that's here says shuffle the miss back in. Cody's going to, um, not Cody, sorry, Leonard is going to range three, one, two, three to kill this creature. Uh, actually, he can't, he can't kill that creature, but he can give him three damage, so that's for, that's for sure. So, um, Leonard's going to attack that guy for three, and so he'll draw minus one, he'll, he'll hit him for two. Uh, and that is number one, so he hits him for two, he's going to take three damage, so I'll swap that one for three. And then he's going to move two, one, two, out there, and his turn pick up the money. We don't let money go. So high, uh, highest initiative or best initiative gets attacked. So we might be seeing a repeat of what happened last time. So they're gonna push and attack. Gosh, this might be a repeat. This is insane. All right. So number five is gonna attack Cody. Um, with a modifier of plus one. So it's plus one already. So it's two, plus one, three, plus one, four damage. I'm already down to six. Does this sound familiar? Next one's going to attack. Uh, minus one. Woo. So it's going to hit him for two. So he's down to four. Oh my gosh. Okay, so our turn again. Um, I need to heal and attack. <laughs> That's what I need to do in the best way possible. Uh oh, and I gotta reshuffle this because there are new initiatives coming out. Not fun. Not fun. I can do it. I can do it. I promise. So, uh, we'll move this around, not look. Look, 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 look. Look around. Look at you. Looking at you. Looking at me. Looking at you. All right, and then uh, we will draw it up. That guy. So no, no additions, but they, t they can target both of us now. Okay. So you need to heal. You need to heal bad. Uh, so he's got the heal two. And then he needs an attack. Target one enemy with, within two hexes to do two damage to. You're at a three, number one. So he can kill you. It has disarm, which I don't care about. And there's a full effect. I don't need that. We're going to do 14. 14 is his initiative. He's going first. So if he does three damage to this guy, he'll kill him. Which means that guy's still going to have five health. No, no, no. He's going to do three damage to that guy, and then I'm going to do double throw with a range of two to hit two of them. Um, Yep, so that's so double throw is coming out, and then he's going to uh, do the uh, 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 do the heal three on on uh Cody. So all right, so his initiative is eighteen, his is fourteen. There's his fifty nine. Uh, he goes uh, Cody goes first. He's going to heal for two. So he's going to go up to six. And then he's going to attack for three, this top guy, and immobilize him. So modifier, plus zero. So he takes, top guy takes three. Uh, where am I? Who is number five? Number five takes three, and he is immobilized. 
and you say, what does immobilize mean? It means he cannot move. But that is that. And then he is going to heal. Uh, oh, it's just a self-heal. No! I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was a self-heal. You heal, you heal for three damage. I can't use that. He's going to go second anyway because the initiative was 14. I didn't realize that. That's my bad. He'll use this, the 24. So he's going to use the 24 to move. Um, but he's not going to move yet. He's going to rate. He's going to attack two that are three away. One, two, three. One, two. And he's going to do two damage to both. Different modifiers for each. So let's start with number five at the top. Plus zero, two damage. He died. So that's five. And then second one at the bottom. Plus one. So it's uh, two, three, six total. But she has five health. He dies. All right, things are going right. Things are going well. Oh, this was a miss. I was supposed to shuffle this back in. Missed that. Missed my shuffle. Every single time you draw a miss, you shuffle. So you shuffle it all and deal with that type of life again. Okay. These cards are super, they, like they feel really good. They're, they just slide right off your fingers. And there's no reshuffles in here. Nope. All right. And when they die, they drop money, which I didn't do last time either. They die, they drop money. Uh, so he did the attack, and then he's going to move. Uh, this creature was supposed to move on their turn, too. So I didn't move him down. But she would have. So then he's going to move here, stop, get the money. And that will end that round. This creature. Is going to move. He has an attack range of two, but no one's there, so he's going to move here because he has one movement. And then we draw up to our final round. All right, let's go ahead and make this interesting. So his will be 63, so he's going after this creature. And yours will be two, five. Yep. Yours will be uh, eight. 18 or 25 doesn't matter go for this creature so Leonard goes first he's got a move and then he's got an attack so Leonard can go one two three four and hit the creature for three so one two so he comes here which is where I was headed because he has five movement and then he's going to hit the creature for three plus modifier minus one so two damage one two and you are number two Three. All right, then the creature goes because he's 59 and Cody's lowest one is 63. So the creature is going to range up to two, but it doesn't matter because the creature's there, the closest one. He's going to attack no modifier for two damage. So two damage plus miss. He missed. Oh my gosh. Complete miss. And when that happens, just immediately shuffle the deck because, like, last time I skipped it because I was super excited and missed out. So, yay. All right. All right. Woohoo! All right, channel today. How's everybody doing? All right. There we go. All right. We are cool. All right, so, and you go into this. So we take a long rest. I might be able to survive this one, right? So, well, not a long rest, a short rest, sorry. Long rest is much worse. So we take a short rest. I'm gonna lose this card. Two adjacent enemies suffer, it's my heal. So I lose my heal. And we bundle this up. And spin it. And we bundle it up some more. Then we spin it. And I'm going to take this one. My attack three, my strong one, even with the push, lost. All right. So let's see what we do here. 
Um, Leonard can attack three. It's got two help to kill it. And then does he have a move? He has a move two. Yep, that's what Leonard's going to do. 35-51. Cody is going to... Uh, So if you hit him for three, he dies. But just in case you miss, we're going to hit him for move three. So our initiative is going to be 14. So it's a ranged attack that I can hit with those basic things, throwing the sickle and pulling him towards me. So Leonard has 14, Cody has 35, initiative 59. Uh, Leonard goes, I mean, Cody goes first. He's going to move one, two, stop right here. Because at the end of the turn, he's going to pick up that coin. He's going to, this is a ranged attack, so it's going to be two away. One, two, enough. Throws it. Minus one, so it's two damage. So this creature is down to four. Well, down four health. So one left to go. Battle in that. Uh, Leonard's turn. Leonard is going to attack the creature for... Three with three ranged, so plus one. Yeah, that's enough. Kills him. Awesome. And then Leonard is going to move one, two. Pop open some doors here. Here. Traps out. Put a coin out. The creature died here. Oh, he got pulled. He died. So, and a coin. There we go. So, then we go into the next round. Um, do it, Jason. That's not going to do anything. I need to get to him to punch him in the face. I can move four and attack him for two. Or I can throw the, sick the blinding sickle again. This one does a disarm. Target one enemy, disarms. One enemy within two hexes suffers two damage, plus modifier, and cannot attack until the end of its next turn. Awesome. So we could stop that creature from attacking with this. I just need movement. Move four. So we're going to do that. That's going to happen for Leonard with an 87 initiative. Oh, boy. That's too much. We'll do it. So I'm going to go just in case. Um, Cody will... Cody didn't take any damage. He can only heal himself, so he's going to use his move 5 and his attack 2. So his initiative is 18. So he's going to attack for 2 because it's 59. So attack for 2, plus 2, 4. So attack. So he does 4 damage. To this creature. Sweet. Actually, can he come here? He would move five. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Nope. You would have to step on this trap if you wanted to get here. Or he could do one, two here, and then he would have one, two, three, one, two. He could have done that. He could have done the move in. Why not? We're running out of time. So he'll do that. Um, he attacks the two targets, so he hits this one for four, so that one takes four damage, um, which is number five, take four damage, and then he attacks this one, which is minus one, so it's just one damage on that, uh, number four. And then, um, so that ends his turn. They go, because they're ahead, this one attacks him, because there's another one there, um, so two damage plus zero, so two damage to Leonard, Leonard's down six. And then uh, the next one, this one is going to move here, and they can range two to hit him. So it attacks, minus one, two, no mods, so one damage, Leonard's down to five. That's the end of them. Then comes Cody. Cody's going to move six, one, two, no, not six, sorry, four. He's going to move four. And he ended this turn here and didn't pick up his money. 
one, two, three, right here. And then he's going to attack this guy for two um, to disarm him. So plus one, so it's three. Number five, three, and the amount that he suffered, he dies. Disarming would meant nothing. <laughs> and then their turn to go. Oh, no, they already went. So then now we rest. I think we can do it this time. So we shuffle it up, and we're going to lose a card. Losing cards. All right. All right. And we lose my other attack three. So his two strong spells, gone. This guy. Well, do, 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 do. His attack to his a a solid attack hit. Okay, Leonard, can you hit this? Can you hit this guy? Can you do it for me? Uh, yes, you can. So, um, Leonard can do. They're at fifty nine, so he's got a sixty four for a two rain for a two damage attack. Actually, no, 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 no. Yeah, this will work. He is going to do the 64 and the 51. So what he's going to do is he's going to add plus one to all attacks this turn to make this a two, and it'll add muddle. And it's three away. Now, once again, this is a barricade. If it's a wall, you can't see around it, but barricades have holes in them. He just kind of reaches through and plugs a shot. So he goes ahead and he's going to attack that guy. Is 51, so he'll go first. Mr. Redguard, Cody, is going to... He's got a ranged attack, too. That's going to have pull on it. <laughs> nope, he's going to mobilize that guy. And this guy was supposed to drop money. So he's going to... He's going to do a... Probably do a move six. I'm going to save that. So he's got a ranged one that does three and pull, a ranged one that does two, that's 87, and six, eight, or eight. Actually, he'll probably do this one, move three. He'll do that to get 14. So he goes first with 14. He's going to move here, and then he's going to range attack for two, one, two, to hit this guy for two damage. Minus one, one damage. This guy suffers two. Then that ends that. Cody's turn because he has 51, they have 59. He is going to bump that up to two. And then he's going to attack to see if he can muddle. Oh, and this one immobilized, so he can't move anywhere. Yeah, I'll put it on him. It'll be easier to muddle him. Uh, so, plus zero. So he does two damage to him. Takes two, so he's at four. And then it's the monsters go. Uh, he can actually hit both of them. Uh, he's going to hit both of them. So uh, first shot, plus zero to Leonard. Leonard takes two damage. Leonard goes down to three. Next one is to Cody. Zero. Cody takes two damage. Cody goes down to four. And then we spin it again. Oh, and he hit. No, it was muddled. He was muddled. He was muddled because Cody hit him. So the first attack, it would have been the lowest. So he used to would have hit him the second attack. Same thing. Same thing. So it's fine because he was muddled. I got to make sure I read that on the card. And muddled means that you pull with disadvantage, draw two cards, pick the lowest one. All right. Leonard has two left to go, which is a 90 and a 63, which means he's going to go after. Cody has an 18 and a 25. So Cody, Cody can move five. What does five look like? One, two, three, four, five. Not enough. Not enough. This is a ranged attack. Or he can move and loot. Oh, and okay. Uh, so 
Koi can heal and move and loot, but he would lose this card. Two, one, two, four, five, and then oh, the interact. Yeah, and then we got to finish him off the next fight because he's down to four. So we can beat him. We can beat him. So that's what the heal do. All right. So he goes after the monster. He goes before the monster. So before the monster, he can move and loot four and heal himself for three. He'll lose that card. But that's okay. So one, two, three, four, and heal himself for three. One, two, three, four, heal himself. But he goes up. He goes, he can attack him times two. So it would be four. And that's how much health I had left. He's down. Awesome. There it is again. That happened. Um, yeah. I could have killed him. Uh, oh, wrong deck. Wrong deck. <laughs> the luck of the draw, man. The luck of the draw. So that takes him down. So I get the treasure and the token for doing that from that move, but I lose that card. Which means. Oh, <laughs> yes. Leonard has to has to kill him this turn, or we lost the scenario again. So I lose that card; it's discarded. I'm gonna lose three cards here. There's one here. No, 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 it's just the heal heals me. All right, so this is it. That's his. That's his play. He's got 51. He's going before the monster. I did get the treasure chest, and I did get the coin. So that goes over to Leonard. And, Len and Leonard's going to move 1-2, and then he's going to range attack to hit this guy, the muddle. Uh, nope, for two, for two damage. So, killed him. Thank you. So he dies. <laughs> so, he dies. I won the scenario. So I got the treasure, I got the money, I won the scenario. Cody got KO'd twice, but that's okay. He still got the money. Leonard picked up as much money as he could, so Leonard got a bunch of money and the treasure. All right, so here's what we got going for us. Uh, when this treasure loot the tile is looted, look for entry 14 in the treasure index on the inside back of the cover glossary. All right, cover glossary. Two book. Inside back index for 14. As I said, uh. When this treasure tile is looted, look for entry 14 in the treasure index on the inside back cover. Treasure index number 14. Gain three money. So there's three money in there. One, two, three. So I've got three. All right, so that was what was in the treasure chest. With the foul nest cleanse of those wretched creatures, you take your time searching every nook. Surely the city guard will want to know about this. It can't be safe to have vermlings tunneling through the walls. It's hard enough to fend off their raids as it is. Eventually, you do manage to find an unexpectedly large amount of gold under some rotten wooden boards. Sifting through the treasure, you also find a strange note. In crude scratching, it details some business arrangement between the vermlings and someone by the name of Roland. Apparently, in exchange for supplying fresh corpses, Roland would pay the vermlings in gold, and judging by the amount here, the vermlings managed to kill quite a few people before you put an end to it. It's, best it's the best lead you have, so it's time to ferret out this Roland character after resting at the Sleeping Lion Inn, of course. Reward. So was there a reward on this last one? Is it? Reward. Uh, hold the wall. This one. Reward. 25 gold each. Buddy. So let's get that documented. So Cody gets 25 gold. 
25 G's, and Leonard gets 25 G's. Uh, item shop opens items 1 through 13 in the lovely, lovely glossary. So we can shop, and we will do this next time. And I'll get that up so we can we can see what we'll what we'll buy. So we get the item shop open and we get a new location, the black ship from the stickers. Where's my stickers? Uh here they are. Uh number three, black ship, which is D5 on this lovely map. D5, right there. Huzzah! So we peel off number three. D5 right here. There we go. The black ship. That's our next locale. All right. Congratulations on completing scenario two. Remember, the scenario doesn't end until the end of the round in which the goal was completed, so you might have extra time in hand to pick up some last minute stuff. I do not, and I'm not going to play that game. So, I mean, I, uh, no, I only had two cards. I only had, I was three. I lost one. Uh, I lost one of them, but it was three. So, nope, I do not. Done the scenario. I'll miss two, two coins. After that, make sure to read the conclusion text, which we did, and uh, take out the city map and mark the scenarios complete with a check. Scenario three, remember to fully refresh, recovering all cards, removing all conditions, and returning to maximum hit points as a reward. Each character gets 25 gold, which we will deal with along the way to pay for new stuff. And that is the first playthrough of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. It was a rough go of it for Cody, and we will, I will make sure to add up these numbers properly. This chest goes back here. So that Leonard can get the ton of money that he picked up, Cody can get the money, and we can. So when you get money, it is your money to do with per your character, but you work together as a team because you see I had to to win or else I would have completely lost. And so we'll buy each other stuff and power up and see how things go. This board, awesome. Stickers, top notch. I mean, the stickers are even nice. How they blend in, you can't even tell that there's stickers on here, right? Like, look. Can you even tell that the stickers are on here after I've placed them? It just looks like places on the map. Like, that's how it is for me, too. So it looks really good. It plays really well. Board is durable. Games are quick. So I got through scenario one and two. Remember, this is a five scenario tutorial on a 25 scenario campaign. So five of them is teaching you how to play before they throw you into it and let you do your thing. And it's been great. I love it. Things that um, threw me. That I need. Now, I know Dragon was on here and he said that what he's going to do is get dice to deal with the health and the mana. I'm going to do the same thing because this is gaudy. It's, it's big and I don't, I, I don't need that. I don't have the, this, the table space that a lot of people have. So, yeah, I need to uh, maximize the amount of space I have what I have. So I'll go dice. I'm going to find a solution to this. Even if you buy the Jaws of the Lion game, these things are way... Look how small these are. They're way too small. It's not going to work. So I'm going to find a solution to the initiative track that also makes good use of the table space. And we'll, that should help me get like the discard lost. Because this says discard on this side, lost, and the active that you put up here. So the cards that you have, you just kind of keep in your hand or put off to the side. But because of my table space, I've just had to deal with what's there. I did make a goof at the beginning of the game where I forgot to pull the modifier card, but I paid for it because Cody got beat up here, he got beat up here, and he was okay. Leonard handled business, and he just kind of came through and handled things, and it worked out. So I like the Red Guard because they're the brutes, right? I mean, he had 10 health. He absorbed a lot of damage. He fell, especially to that times two that came up twice. I don't know how much that's happened to people. And... The hatchet, uh, not a fan of the dials in any game. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Dragon. The hatchet, I like a lot. I really like the. Ha I really like Leonard. Like that would be the class that I would be playing if I play. There's two other classes that I didn't even look at. I, I when it comes up to the part of the game where they're like, if you want to switch out a character, you can. I may switch out Cody for a Void Warden just to see what they do, you know. But until then, 
Cody and Leonard are my tag team. They are part of the group, the Jaws of the Lion, and it's great. I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Let's go back up and see what y'all think. What is your token holder foam board? This actually came with Jaws of the Lion uh, Dragon. It's just what they sent as an insert. I didn't even have to buy anything. They came with that solution, which was fantastic. And even on their box here, as you can see, they come with, oh, I moved away from the table so you can't see anything. Let me go back to the table real quick. You see this? They come with, so you don't have to buy broken token or anything to make things fit. It comes, everything's ready to go. Everything fits in a place. It even has places for you to slide the different cards that we're gonna open up later. And as you can see, they're still locked. It's still sealed. I haven't even opened them yet. We're gonna open them together. And um, the special ABCD guys, the ones that are out here, the, demo the Demolitionist and the Void Warden, some, uh, this is the energy board that we'll get to later. I actually bought a different energy board from Etsy that is 10 billion times better than this thing. So when we get to unlocking magic, I'm gonna pull that out so you can see what that looks like. Um, and just the monster cards, but everything fits in here perfectly. So if you buy the game, you don't have to worry about, well, I need to do that. Or even the organizers, they give you Ziploc bags for you to do organizers with and say, take, pop these out, put them in the, the Ziploc bags and run with that. So it's just perfect. The game has been made, you see it's streamlined, it's not dense, it's very straightforward, and they made it that way because they want a, a, a very easier, um, not a heavy barrier for people or saying Gloomhaven's too big. If I was to swing around to go to my, um, my shelf of shame and pull out Gloomhaven, I would be holding it like this. The box is immense. But this box is simple, it's about the size of a normal board game. Um, it's smaller than Monopoly, so it's about the size of a normal board game, and you can just put it out, play, have a good time. I played through two scenarios. It's, it took me about roughly two hours, so an hour scenario, and then you could just be like, okay, I'm done, and move on, and then come back later and play. Uh, so this has been fantastic. Regarding Elemental Board from... Regarding... Is it wood and side tokens slide to Yes, yes, that's what I have. I have the one that is, it is a, it is a wooden board with like that, it, and it's this beautiful, it's not cherry, I forgot what it's called, but I have even the slide tokens that are from, that I'm gonna use from Gloomhaven on them, and then I have like a little track to see how it goes and just slide them side to side. That's the one I picked up from them because it was just so gorgeous, I couldn't pass it up. And when we get to the elemental um, stuff showing that, I'm gonna use that instead of the regular board. But nothing is wrong with this board. Nothing is wrong with it. It's just, that one's prettier. So don't worry about this. Don't be like, what the heck is this kanji? When we get to that part in the book, they will expose this to you and then you'll be able to see what's going on. So it'll work out fine. I saw that thought of doing it on 3D printer. If you can do it on the 3D printer, do it on the 3D printer. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it's beautiful once you see it. Like, when y'all see it, I'm just going to hold it up close so you can check it out, and it's going to be great. I'm curious still to, I mean, I did my playthrough of it, and everyone in the world who has Jaws of the Lion is, is because it's the new hotness, right? So everybody's playing it. But I've avoided all spoilers. I haven't watched any playthroughs. I haven't watched any how to plays or watch it played or gaming tables or anything like that. I just kept it pure until I had a chance to dive into it. And I am very happy with my purchase. This is a lot of fun. If you can find it in a Target store, pick it up. Um, it's a great family game. As you can see, it's just card playing. Play whatever is great if you have enough initiative. If the modifier deck is there for you, it'll work itself out. And as you build up as you go, because it doesn't get more complex than this. The inert energy is only for casters, so that's probably the most complex thing in the game. Everything else is pretty much what you see here. So, um... You're not gonna play? <laughs> do it, Dragon, do it! Buy it! It's so good! It's a lot of fun! Like... I'm going to read through these um, backstories because I wasn't sure which one I'd like or who I wanted to play with, but I've saved my game as Cody and Leonard. And so now I'm going to flip over because I haven't even read this back stuff yet, right? Back here to say like their backstory. I know it's super blurry. I'm sorry. 
It just is. But they have a backstory on why on who they are and all that stuff to get you a little bit more immersed. Perks come in, spells come in, buying cards come in. All that stuff is not complex. It just seems that way. Um, but we finished Scenario 1, Scenario 2. Um, next playthrough is Dark Soul Sunday, where we'll play Seekers of Humanity, which is the latest expansion. Then I have, actually, next week, um, I have some vacation time, which means board game time. So I've got some surprises. I'm going to be playing a very awesome game um, called Proving Grounds. I, I, know not a lot of, ugh, I know not a lot of people will know what that game is, but it is so much fun, and the difficulty is Dark Souls. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, so I'll be doing Proving Grounds. Um, they are main variant. I probably might do the Sun and Moon variant. Um, and then after that, because I'm doing one in two days, two, I'm doing a playthrough two days, so let me see. I gotta take a look and see exactly what I am doing, because I did a lot of stuff and it was a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm doing Dark Souls Sundays, and then um, on the 6th, which is Monday, I'm doing Proving Grounds. So I'm doing Proving Grounds on Monday, and then Tuesday, I'm doing Scenarios 3 and 4 of Jaws and Lion one day, and then I'm doing the finale of The Call um, in Shadows of Killforth. The Call is a, is a game that I made up myself. Uh, I went through Gloomhaven twice and have... Oh, oh yeah, Frosthaven coming, so not sure... Well, Jaws of the Lion's like that in-between, though, right? It's that hit. It's the hit that you need right before, you know, Frosthaven comes out. It's only 25 scenarios, too. So if you've been through Gloomhaven twice with their 10 billion scenarios, you'll probably burn through this really quick. But it's fun, and it's... Um, let me finish that. So um, I'm going through um, the Shadows of Killforth, the final episode of The Call, to, and I'm going to be blending... Um, I'm going to be blending locations from Gloom of Killforth and Shadow of Killforth together. I'm going to be blending, um, well, not the Ancients. The Ancients will still stay the Shadows of Killforth Ancients, but I'll be blending the Night cards together. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. I will, whatever I, whatever I blend from the deck, I then have to blend the Night cards for that. So I'll be doing that blending, and then we'll play it and see what happens. And hopefully I won't draw an Outcast card, because those things are terrible. So um, that it's it's a board game packed week from Sunday to Tuesday. So twice on Tuesday, once on Monday, once on Sunday, and then we'll get back into the rotation on Thursday. I think Thursday I have a game that I'm going to be scheduling. If not, then the finale of Dark Souls Sundays will be that following Sunday, and that's what we'll go with. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I'm My milestone goal is to hit 100 subs. So if I hit 100 subscribers, um, I'm going to do a, I don't know. I'll ask y'all what y'all want me to do. I could do a Q&A so y'all can ask me tons of questions, show you my table or whatever. Um, I'm sure you probably have questions that kind of get to know you thing. But my milestone is to hit 100 subscribers. Um, so if you enjoy this and want to see more of this playthrough, or more of the board games that I have to do because I love sharing this with you all, please join me at the table. Um, join, you know, subscribe if you feel, if the spirit moves you, subscribe. Um, hit reminder on the shows that you'd like to see so that you know to make it to the table and enjoy what you see. And let me know how I'm doing. If I messed up anything, put it in the comments. I love learning, so if I mess up something, tell me. I'll learn. I'll do better. And we'll continue having a great time. Everyone stay safe. Insert caption of all the other stuff that nice people say during this time. And take care. I will see y'all later.